This is Jim Leeming with National Pro Highlights, the show that brings you all the action in the wide open sport of professional football. With the regular season completed, it's time for our annual survey of the best performances of each of the National League teams. From the top of the league to the cellar, every club came up with some sparkling play. We've rounded up all of those big moments so you can relive them thrill by thrill as they happened during the 1958 season. The Green Bay Packers were able to hit the win column but once in 1958. In that victory over the Eagles, it's Bay Pirelli pitching to Bill Houghton with the Packers leading in the game three to nothing. When Pirelli was hot, the Packers were potent. The former Kentucky star aimed for the goal line and his all-pro end, Billy Houghton, has it for a touchdown. The Eagles pull up to 10-7, but the Packers unleash a yard-eating fullback named Howie Ferguson, who slashes for a 14-yard game. Howie hasn't got a collegiate cheapskin, but he sure knows what to do with that pigskin. He packs it to the Eagle, too. The Packer pile driver dumps another egg in the Eagle nest to earn points for Green Bay. The score is 17-14 at the half. Third period with Pirelli piloting the Packers. It's a short pass to Al Carmichael, and Al is off on a first down foray. Pirelli is back to pass again, and Carmichael runs a beautiful pattern to shake loose in the end zone. Carmichael makes the catch for a 24-14 lead. Green Bay regains possession, and Pirelli seems to have the touch today. He fires a 15-yard pass to Gary Canaffle on the Philadelphia 15. Babe Pirelli has Green Bay on its way to its first victory of 1958. He aims for Canapple, and Gary grabs it to make the margin 31 to 14 Packers. Still in the third period, and the Packers are trampling the Eagles. It's Don McElhenney carrying the ball and banging for 12 yards. Pirelli has already passed for two TDs in this period. Here he goes again as he hoists a perfect peg to Max McGee. Green Bay goes on to a 38-35 victory in its top performance of the 1958 season. The Philadelphia Eagles moved to the University of Pennsylvania's spacious Franklin Field in 1958 and had a little trouble finding their bearings, but they pasted a good one on the New York Giants. Sparked by their great quarterback, Norm Van Brocklin, the Eagles move ahead early as Norm drops a perfectly timed touchdown pass into the arms of Clarence Peaks. Later in the quarter, the New Yorkers are forced to punt. Billy Wells takes the ball deep in Eagle territory, bouncing off his own teammate, the shifty speedster spins into the open and gets a timely block to send him on his way. Wells tracks 65 yards before he's caught from behind. The play sets up a Philadelphia field goal. With the game tied at 10-10, watch the Eagles strike again. Norm Van Brocklin throws high and far from the shadow of his own goal post. Tom McDonald catches up with the ball and outruns the Giants for a 91-yard touchdown. Third longest in the league this year as the Eagles lead 17 to 10. The Giants are leading in the third period as Norm Van Brocklin takes to the air again. His receiver is Pete Retzlaff, and Pete picks up good yardage for a 26-yard gain. On fourth and four, Van Brocklin calls for a field goal, and Bobby Walston obliges to put the men of the Quaker City close at 24 to 20. In the final period, the Eagles aim for a victory. Van Brocklin throws, and Pete Retzlaff, who tied for the league pass-catching championship, makes a good catch. Van Brocklin and company have the mighty Giants on the run. Norm passes, and Bill Barnes makes a fantastic grab to make it goal to go for the Eagles. Philadelphia's flying Dutchman keeps right on throwing. He pops one to Walt Kowalczyk, who gets to the one. Bill Barnes belts across as the Philadelphia Eagles hand the Giants one of their three defeats by coming from behind in a 27-24 thriller. It was the high spot of the season for Philadelphia fans. The Chicago Cardinals, sporting a new coach, a fine crop of rookies, and a brand new offense, stirred up plenty of trouble in the Eastern Conference. Pop Ivey's men show how well his new offense can work as rookie John Crow takes an inside handoff and skips through the Washington Redskins forward wall. Crow takes flight in the Redskins secondary and sprints down the sideline on an 83-yard run, the longest from scrimmage this year. The Cards lead the skin 7 to nothing. The Cards deal out more trouble in the second period. Ollie Matson takes the ball and chucks off a tackler on a 15-yard sweep. Lamar McCann hot-foots it back to pass. 
But Lamar finds the going easier on the ground. He dodges a couple of beefy Washington Warriors and wheels to the Redskins 31. It's the Cards candidate for Rookie of the Year at quarterback. His name is M.C. Reynolds, and his pass is on the beam to Ali Matson on the Washington 15. John Crow jars across to give Chicago a 14-0 lead. Reynolds, who played his football at LSU, tosses a towering shot to Gern Nagler. Nagler's finally down on the Redskins 17. Reynolds is riddling the Redskins pass defense. He's under plenty of pressure, but gets one away to Jimmy Sears. Sears takes it to a touchdown for a 24-3 lead. MC is scalping the skins again in the final period. He makes a nice fake and pitches to Joe Childress deep in the Redskin reservation. This was Reynolds' best day of the season and a great one for the Cards. It's a touchdown pass to Max Boyston as the Chicago team takes a 30-3 lead over Washington. Reynolds is a rugged runner, which makes him double trouble to the Redskins. Watch MC weave his way to a 25-yard gain. Veteran quarterback Lamar McGann is not to be outdone by a rookie. As soon as he gets in the game, Lamar lifts the pass to Ollie Matson. Matson streaks to the final Cardinal tally in Chicago's action-filled conquest of the Washington Redskins. 1957's National League champions, the Detroit Lions, had some rough sledding in 58, but they really looked like champions against the San Francisco 49ers. The Lions have the ball and strike like lightning. Gene Gedman turns passer as he powers a tremendous toss up field. Hop along Cassidy has gotten behind his defenders and pulls it in to trot untouched to an 82 yard touchdown that ties the game at seven apiece. Lions on the prowl again as Tobin Rote races back and fires to Jim Gibbons slanting in from right end. The rapid rookie from Iowa outruns the San Francisco secondary to put Detroit ahead 14 to seven after one period. Road has the Motor City men moving again. He fakes to a halfback and keeps as he takes off in the other direction to drive all the way to the 49er two. Gene Gedman digs hard over left guard and he's in for the score. Detroit leads San Francisco 21 to seven. The next time they get the ball, the Lions are on their way again. Again, Gedman fools the 49ers as he stops and lost the long pass to Dave Middleton. It's a 30-yard gain that puts the Detroiters on the San Francisco 11. Robin Rode gets into the act as he rifles over the middle to Dave Middleton, who falls into the end zone to give Detroit a 28-7 lead. The Lions believe there's safety in numbers, especially if they're on the scoreboard. Rode gets them on their way with a rollout pass to Jim Doran, who makes a diving catch for a 25-yard gain. Rote rolls out to his right again, stops and fires across the field to Gene Gedman. Gedman can receive as well as pass. Gene lugs the ball into the end zone as the Detroit Lions put on their best show of 1958 in downing the San Francisco 49ers 35 to 21. The Washington Redskins were expected to be Eastern Conference contenders this year, but they were hobbled by injuries all season long to key personnel. Their best show was in Griffith Stadium against the Packers. The Skins featured a potent running attack, and Ed Sutton shows how it worked with a thrust to the Packer 45. Our camera catches one of the great runs of the season in slow motion. It's Johnny Olszewski getting the handoff and breaking through the Green Bay line. Johnny O leads the Packers a Murray chase before spinning into the end zone for a 45-yard touchdown. The Skins lead the Packers 7-0. Eddie LeBaron calls for the same play later in the period. Johnny O rolls up more yardage as he powers for 21 yards to the Green Bay 43. On fourth down, Sam Baker goes back to the Packer 44 for a field goal attempt. It's good, and it's 10 to nothing Redskins. Eddie LeBaron, the league's top passer in 1958, flips a short one to Jim Padoli. Jim, whose injury hurt the Redskins, gets to the Green Bay 35. The Skins make a huge hole for Johnny O, and he scrambles through for nine yards. 
The Baron is only a half pint, but he causes the opposition more trouble than a full court. Joe Walton makes the catch and fights for the touchdown. At halftime, the Redskins lead the Packers 20 to nothing. In the third period, Little Chief Eddie LeBaron launches another aerial strike. The pass is to Joe Walton, and Joe is finally hemmed in on the Packer 48. LeBaron, who stands only 5 feet 7 inches, waits until Bill Anderson is in the clear, then hits him with a touchdown strike. The Redskins caravan rolls to a 37-21 victory over Green Bay for one of its finest showings of the season. The 49ers scored their greatest victory on the final day of the season as they entertained the Western Conference champion Colts and showed them a bad time. Veteran fullback Joe Purry ignites a prospector push as he digs over the middle and gets 19 yards before losing his balance. San Francisco's vintage tosser, Y.A. Tittle, is right on target to Billy Wilson in the right flat for 14 yards. Tittle, an 11-year man in the league, bootlegs the ball, then flips to Clyde Connor. It's a touchdown. The 49ers lead the classy Colts 7-3. It's 7-6 as the prospectors move into the Colt Corral in the third quarter. Tittle's toss to Clyde Connor brings them to the Baltimore 29. Tittle pitches out to you, McElhenney. The 49ers' flashy halfback makes tracks to the right and fights for 11 yards. Tittle dances back and pops a short one to Joe Purry. Joe turns on the power and jolts to within inches of the goal line. The slow motion camera shows the drive of the league's all-time ground-gaining champion. J.D. Smith smashes across as the prospectors pull away again. It's 14-6, 49ers. In the final quarter, the 49ers give J.D. Smith some more exercise. He finds a nice opening and lopes through for a 17-yard gainer before the Colts can catch him. The prospectors call on the peerless passer. Diddle flips over the middle to Clyde Connor, who makes the catch for a 13-yard gain. J.D. Smith is making 49er fans sit up and take notice. He fights over right guard and battles his way to a first down. The ball goes to J.D. again, and Smith smashes for another 49er tally. The prospectors close out their season with their greatest game as they reverse their earlier loss to the Colts. The Pittsburgh Steelers were the surprise of the league as they overcame a slow start to finish in third place in the East. A revelation to Pittsburgh fans was the play of Tom Tracy, number 30. Watch him go against the Chicago Bears. The stocky halfback goes all the way on a 30-yard play. Tracy hasn't finished tormenting the Bears. Tom breaks through the line and sheds a couple of tacklers before picking up his blockers and maneuvering downfield. Tom is hit hard, but Jimmy Orr is on the spot to recover his fumble for another six yards. Tom Miner does the place kicking for Pittsburgh. His ability comes in handy here as he boots the Steelers into a 10 to nothing lead. Bobby Lane, number 22, has been the spark plug of the Steelers' surge. The veteran quarterback passes to Jimmy Orr, who makes a rolling catch at midfield. Jim Moore is the Steelers' nomination for Rookie of the Year, and here's why. As Lane passes, the big end from Georgia makes a sensational catch and carries for the score. Orr pulled them in like this all season. The Steeler defense cools off the big bad Bears, and Lane goes to work again. He looks for Jim Orr, and Jimmy's there to take the ball and tear to the Bears 16. Tom Tracy may be shaped like a fire plug, but he runs like a racehorse as he scores the clincher for Pittsburgh's fifth straight victory, a 24-10 conquest of the Bears. In battling to a tie with the Rams for second place in the West, the Chicago Bears racked up an 8-4 log for the season. In their first meeting with the Rams, the Bears feature a rugged defense. Here they block a Ram field goal attempt. Eric Barnes picks up the ball and bolts 41 yards to make it a tie game 7-7. Next time they get the ball, the Bears turn loose, Gallup and Willie Gallimore, and Willie racks up a 14-yard gain. 
Gallimore goes in from the one as the Bears pull into a 17-7 lead at halftime. The Bears trot out a rookie runner by the name of Johnny Morris. Morris takes a short pass and toasts it all over the field as he freezes by one ram after another. It's one of the most exciting plays of 1958 as Chicago threatens. The Bears are set back by a penalty, but they're moving in the final period. Ed Brown hurls to Harlan Hill, and Hill is finally pulled down after a 40-yard gain. Quarterback Ed Brown has the Chicago machine in high gear. He straightens up and whips a short one to Bill McCall. Willie Gallimore knows the way from there. Willie is so shifty he makes his 20-yard trip through the Rams look easy as he scores to give the Bears a 24-10 lead. Merle Douglas, a freshman from Utah, dents the Ram defense for 17 yards. The Bears have ground at the Rams' aerial circus and put on one of their own as Ed Brown closes out the scoring with a pass to Bill McCall. The Bears' 31-10 victory was one of the high points of this year's campaign. When Los Angeles entertained the Bears, they drew the second largest crowd in NFL history as they attempted to earn a split on the season. With the Bears leading 7-0, Billy Wade tries to get the Rams going. He succeeds in sensational style as he whips the pass to John Arnett. Jaguar John steers a tricky course through the baffled Bears on a 72-yard trip to the Chicago 3 to set up a score. Los Angeles leads 17-7 as Wade gets another Ram raid underway. Wade fades and flips to rookie Jim Phillips. Jim makes it into the end zone, but the officials rule the play dead on the 10. But the next play pays off in points. Wade zeroes in on Leon Clark, and Los Angeles leads the Bears 24-7. The Rams have the Bears bottled up, and Zeke Bretkowski punts. John Arnett, the league champion in the punt return department, battens his average with a weaving return that carries for 58 yards. Los Angeles has a stable full of fleet backs. Bill Wade passes to Tom Wilson. Touchdown Tom follows his blockers into the clear and makes a dodging dash for the goal line. He's over for the score as the Rams pour it on at 31-7. The Bears manage to make it 31-21, but the Rams retaliate with John Arnett. John starts to the right, reverses his field, and sweeps to the left on a stirring 52-yard gallop as the Rams go in from there to split with the Bears by taking this one 41-35. The New York Giants, who battled their way right to the top in the East, looked like world beaters right from their opening game with the Cardinals. Defensive demon Sam Huff takes a hand in things as he intercepts a Lamar McCann pass to give the ball to the Giants. Frank Gifford takes a handoff, cuts back nicely, and drives over the goal line as New York takes a 7-0 lead. The Giants rumble goalward again. The give is to Pell-Mell Triplett, and Mel mauls the Cardinals on a blast to the Chicago 8. Frank Gifford cracks the Cardinal line and carries a tackler across as his second touchdown boosts New York into a 14-0 advantage. Second quarter and the Giants work one of their favorite plays. It's a reverse to Frank Gifford. Fabulous Frank flashes for 33 yards as he makes a goal to go. The slow camera spots a beautiful trap block by number 62, Bob Mishak. Alex Webster squeezes through the hole and keeps his balance long enough to get into the end zone. The Giants are parading their power with a 20 to nothing lead. When the Giants get the ball again, Charlie Connerly calls on Alex Webster. Alex is off on a dazzling piece of broken field running. The guards finally catch Webster, but he's just three yards away from pay dirt. Webster gets a chance to pick up the final three yards, and he does. New York is having one of its biggest days of the year. The Giants try out their rookie halfback, Phil King. King crashes for 18 yards and a promising debut. 
King goes the other way, and the result is the same. He rolls for 12 yards, and the New Yorkers are getting close. Frank Gifford is power personified as he slashes over the middle to make it goal to go. Gifford gallops wide to score as the Giants batter the Cardinals 37 to 7 and go on to tie for the top spot in the Eastern Conference race. The Cleveland Browns, who were tied by New York for Eastern Conference honors on the final day of the season, were in championship form when they met the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cleveland's quarterback, Milt Plum, fades almost to the goal line and throws to Ray Renfro on the Brown 30. Ray picks up 10 more yards as the Browns start a drive. Bobby Mitchell, Cleveland's outstanding rookie, fools the Steelers with a brilliant change of pace on a 23-yard sweep around left end. Cleveland blockbuster Jim Brown takes over. Jim bowls over a pair of Pittsburghers, spins free, and outraces the rest of the goal line. Jim Brown set a new National League season rushing record in his second year of pro play. Cleveland Brown attack begins to roll again. Milt Plum picks on Preston Carpenter for a pass play. Carpenter has it for a 21-yard profit. Milt Plum pitches back to Jim Brown, and Brown bruises the Steelers as he adds 11 more yards toward his record-breaking total. Here's Cleveland's version of the screen pass. Plum goes to his right, then passes back towards the middle. Bobby Mitchell has a few friends in front of him, and they do their job as he fakes a few others on a perfect scoring play that makes it 14 to nothing Brown. Another Cleveland star gets into the act as Milt Plum passes. It's Darrell Brewster pulling in the ball in the end zone as the Cleveland tally goes to 21 nothing over the Steelers. With a score at 24 to 10, the Browns go for more as they hand to Jim Brown. Jim comes wide, brushes off all attempts to tackle him, and speeds all the way for a 58-yard touchdown. Just one of his record-tying season total of 18 as Cleveland went on to finish with a 9-3 loss. The Baltimore Colts had just one defeat marring their record as they went into the 10th game of the season, needing victory over the 49ers to clinch the Western crown. But the Colts trail 27-7 in the third quarter. Lenny Moore takes a United pass to the 49er three. Alan Amici, the Colt powerhouse, dives over for the touchdown, and the Colts are closer at 27-14. Baltimore goes for the big play as they try to pull this one out of the fire. Johnny United flings a 50-yard pass downfield. Jim Mutchler has it and is collared immediately. United throws to Lenny Moore in the left flat, and Lenny dives to the five as the third period ends. Amici slams across for the touchdown. The Colts are driving in the stretch as they trail now by 27 to 21. The Baltimore Colts go into a full gallop here. Lenny Moore rounds left end and sets sail on a swivel hipped excursion through the San Francisco secondary. 73 yards later, Lenny treads the touchdown turf and the conversion puts the Colts ahead 28 to 27. Baltimore increases the blistering fourth quarter pace. United connects with Jim Mutchler at the 49ers 25. With United firing the furnace, the Colts are red hot. Ray Burry grabs his pass as Baltimore moves in on the bewildered 49ers. Johnny United throws to Ray Burry in the end zone as the Colts clinch their first Western Conference title with a great second half comeback. 